Three years after releasing the 907X50C, Hasselblad have updated the line to incorporate the new 102 megapixel sensor, CF Express and SSD media, and the latest software updates. In this video, I'm taking it out of the studio on a road trip through remote Bhutan. Join me as I take tech on the road, explore a travel destination, and test out the gear in real world conditions. This is Field Tested. Now opening the box, the 907X100C looks almost identical to the previous version, but it packs in some important updates. Firstly, it has the new 102 megapixel sensor, same as the one in the X2D100C. That brings a native ISO of 64, with 16-bit color and 15 stops of dynamic range. It also has the new 294-point phase detect autofocus system with phase detect and the same speed as the X2D. It replaces dual SD cards with CF Express Type-B and a built-in 1TB high-speed SSD. Connecting the hot shoe adapter gives you full TTL compatibility with Nikon flashes. The body and back of the camera are really sleek and minimalist, with most of the buttons being below the large rear touchscreen. The optional control grip adds a full set of tactile controls which lets you access everything in the camera without having to adjust your grip or to take your attention off whatever subject you have framed up in the waist level viewfinder. Being modular, you can connect this to your 500 series body in place of a film back and you'll note that the whole camera is about the same size as a 500 main body without a back attached. Despite all these improvements, the new guy actually comes in around 80 grams lighter than the CFV50C. Thanks to Hasselblad for sending this one out for me to test and for sponsoring this video. The camera certainly looks and feels great, but how is it actually going to perform out in the real world? Welcome to Bhutan, folks, this tiny landlocked country famous for its pristine nature and its gross national happiness is the perfect place to test out this new camera from Hasselblad, the 907X with the CFV100C 100 megapixel back. Bhutan is such a relaxed country. It's so authentic. At any moment, you have the time to just stop take a deep breath and really appreciate how beautiful the nature is around you and to genuinely interact with the people that you meet. It's a perfect opportunity for testing out at the tactile experience that you have shooting a camera like this. In this video, I'm going from the high mountains down all the way through to the jungle. I'm gonna be taking the camera with me, shooting on location, people, landscapes, animals, all kinds of things. Let's go. If you're a Hasselblad shooter, folks, check out my expert setup guide. It takes you through every physical control on the cameras and how to set them up for your style of shooting. You can check it out at the link below. It's already been updated for the 907X and the CFV100C. The main point of this trip to Bhutan is to reconnect with a child that I've been sponsoring there. I first met Sarab around eight years ago when he was only five and was living in a monastery. At just four years old, he had been identified as a potential reincarnate Lama. We had uh, quite a connection. I got some nice photos and on one of my subsequent trips, I sought him out, found him, found that he had left the monastery and was now getting a traditional education, met his family and decided to sponsor his education. It's now been almost five years since I've visited, so I'm so looking forward to see Sharab and his mum Tinley and his sisters. 
My journey east to meet him started off with a flight from Paro to Yunfla, which is a mountaintop airstrip, which is a little bit precarious, but it's a beautiful flight with a great view onto the Himalayas. This time of year in winter, there's very little humidity in the air, which means great visibility. On our long drive to Monga, where Sherab lives, we stopped for tea and met some local puppies. Okay, folks, so we're almost at Monga now to meet up with Sharab. This is the temple, however, that eight years ago I actually first met him. It's after dark now and he's not actually here, but we wanted to stop by and just get a couple of quick photos for memory's sake. Now I'll give you the express version of this. If you're interested, let me know and maybe I can do a dedicated video on my time with Sharab. Essentially, met up with the family, reunited. It was really lovely to see them after so many years. Then the staff helped me get dressed in my traditional outfit because today we're heading off to a traditional festival that's held once a year in Shrab's mum's home village of Lunzi. So the famous thing about a go is it has a limitless pocket in the front. So I can just sneak attack my little 100 megapixel medium format camera. I'll probably keep it with a lens cap on and then just tuck it away for my day of shooting. I'll probably wear a black rapid strap as well. What do you think? Kind of fetching, no? Now, the festival itself was fantastic. It was located in the main courtyard of the Zong. Each region has a Zong and it's kind of a cross between a municipal building and a fortress. It's where the monks live and where kind of the local council is operated. All kinds of dancing and fun. We got to meet a lot of the dignitaries, got lots of different vantage points from down low on the ground, shooting up at them, kind of at eye to eye level through windows and from different vantage points around the sides. And then up above shooting from the monastery windows down on the action. I was primarily shooting with the zoom lens, the 55V, the 28P and the 80mm f1.9. If you haven't folks, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. It really does help us put out more content like this. And if you're interested in joining me on a trip, check out the details below for my upcoming trips to Bhutan and Iceland. Now, whilst the form factor of the 907X may make it look a little bit complicated, it's actually fairly intuitive. These monks were taken with it and wanted to have a try. I handed it over to them and they quickly got the hang of it. Of course, it was all set up in auto mode for them, but still they got some decent photos. In terms of image quality, I mean, essentially it's exactly the same as the X2D. It's the same sensor, the same software. The color is just beautiful. I know you can retouch and get colors to match kind of in post, but straight off, once you run things through focus, the colors are just gorgeous, whether you're shooting portraits or landscape. Uh, the only trade-off would be this guy, because it's so small, it doesn't have the in-body image stabilization. So you might find yourself at a higher ISO or a faster shutter speed to make sure you get your shots without wobble. But for me, it hasn't been a big issue, especially the higher ISO performance around 1600 is still pretty good on this guy. After several yeah. fun days with the family at the festival in Lunzi, we dropped them back at Monga and we were heading further east to a second festival, which is one that I'd never actually been to before. I'll just share a bunch of images that we captured along the way.
The second festival was really interesting and it centered around a fire ritual. So that offers some unique shooting opportunities. It was also completely outdoors at a much smaller temple, which gave different photo opportunities compared to the first festival. Now, I was really fortunate that the Atsara, which is like a clown that keeps the proceedings moving forward and keeps everything light at the festival, seemed to take a liking to me, came and introduced himself and then took me around and basically introduced me to the whole community. And that was on the first night. Oh, come, 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 my friend, come. So by day two, when I showed up and I was wearing my traditional outfit, everybody already knew who I was and it was quite easy, a nice icebreaker for me to get shots. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Don't rush. It's okay. No problem. No problem. Let's go. Let's run, let's run. Now the camera I was traveling with was pre-production, but as I said, it has the exact same sensor and imaging system as the X2D, so you can expect exactly the same image quality. Taking a look at this shot, here's 100% crop, and on this one, as we crop in, just look at how much we can recover. This 100 megapixel sensor has dynamic range for days. Now, in terms of battery life and cards, that kind of thing, I love that this is using exactly the same as the X2D. I have that with me as well on this trip, so I've been using them in tandem. To have the same battery I can use the dual charger on is great, same card formats, and this also has the one terabyte SSD, which I find so handy. You just can't leave home without a memory card when you have a built-in SSD like that. In terms of battery performance, I've been shooting quite a lot. I think once I managed to exhaust a battery in a day, but that's when we were shooting from before sunrise to after sunset, but I didn't finish the second battery. So I brought along two batteries per camera and that's been plenty for the trip. Most days I can get by on just a single charge and then use all of the same peripherals, charging equipment, that kind of thing. You also have the port on the side here that you can plug straight into the computer to download the files and to charge. Now a lot of this trip was planned out in detail, but a lot of the photo opportunities tend to happen when you stop at a roadside village or see some locals and start interacting and the photo opportunities just arise. In this case, I found a family who were harvesting, processing, and then roasting fresh corn, which then gets pummeled down into like a cornflake product, but it's eaten warm as a snack. So I shot a whole series of images of the kids as they worked in the field, getting different vantage points to show this cultural aspect of their rural lifestyle. So I've been shooting with this combo for a couple of weeks now in Bhutan and a bit of time before that. In terms of handling and ergonomics, I find it really intuitive and definitely I think the optional grip is worthwhile. If nothing else, that helps me keep it a lot more stable and level. Uh, shooting at kind of waist level using the screen to look up, really helpful when shooting, well, landscapes, but more so people. To not have the camera up like this, you're able to get a different perspective, you're kind of looking up at them, which works really well for travel portraits, I think, and you're able to get more candid kind of shots. Funny though, in Bhutan, dogs don't like it. Apparently this device resembles what they um, use to tranquilize stray dogs before they immunize and neuter them. So other than that, this has been really nice to shoot with. And yeah, despite it being quite a thin grip, it is really robust. I haven't had any play or wiggle or that kind of thing. All of the buttons and the focus and everything is really tactile. If you're a Hasselblad shooter, it blends in really nicely with the X2D.
This is what I mean, it's just so relaxing. It's really the perfect kind of scene for this camera where you can take your time, you don't need to get 50 shots off in five seconds, take your time, get the composition right, get the lines of the rice paddy field that's not growing at the moment, that little cow in the distance, the different huts, and put together something really nice. So it's the second last day of the trip now. I really enjoyed shooting with the new 100 megapixel back. I think if you have a 500 series body, then it's an absolute no brainer. It becomes a three in one. You can use it with your XCD lenses with the 907X little interface here. You can use it on your 500 cameras and make use of all of those great H lenses. And you can use it as a back to technical cameras. If you're also using an X2D or an X1D, then it all integrates really nicely with that, with the same memory cards and batteries. Um, yeah, using the optional grip, I haven't had any issues with it in terms of handling. Um, it's been really fun to shoot with. So let me know any questions that you guys have. Do check out the setup guides. The links are in the description below. Now, see you soon.